We need to erect an international freedom fighting force network for common action amongst peoples the world over. But please, remember the iron rule of power. Those who wield global power use it to promote their objectives and their interests. And those of us who do not wield real global power have no option but to suffer the consequences of the actions of those people that do have that power. It's that tough, it's that iron tight. So what we like is power. And here each one of us has two basic options. Either you collaborate with the New World Order or you resist. And collaboration is not just working for them or helping them or being on their side. Doing nothing is collaborating because that's exactly what they want. They want your inaction. They want you sitting around in the living room with the remote control, complaining about everything but doing nothing. Don't give them your inaction. Resistance is freedom fighting and it won't be peaceful. So the key is to understand. From understanding comes awareness. From awareness comes action. And from the action of a sufficient number of people the world over comes critical mass. And with critical mass you revolutionize the entire planet and thereby revolutionize your individual countries and thereby revolutionize your own lives. Once you understand, action comes of its own. So, first, understand. Understand what? How the system works, unmask its artificial complexity, we've spoken about this in other videos, what the system wants and forces you to do as individuals and as nations, like it or not, and why it wants you to do that. And when you understand the how, the what, and the why, well, very easy. Do exactly the opposite. Hmm? This Freedom Force International that Ed Griffin speaks about must be international, not global, because taking back our countries means restoring our nation states. They have been eroded and weakened. The state is not just there to govern you and to give you your rights. Those rights are inalienable. inalienable. They were born with you. The state is there to protect those rights, to ensure that nobody takes those rights away from you. Remember, if you start thinking that the state gives you rights, they can turn around tomorrow and take them away. They don't give you rights. You give the state right. So what has the New World Order power elite done? It has taken the nation state away from us. It turned it upside down and they put it against us, making it become an instrument of blatant colonization in favor of the New World Order global power structure. What do we need to do in every country? We need to restore our nation states, our sovereign nation states. I call it in Argentina, and I think this is valid the world over just about, founding a second republic. We need to restore truly sovereign nation states for every people, because the, nation, the sovereign nation state is the sole social institution that allows we the people to fight back against the global ruling elite. We need to literally refound our nation states. All peoples the world over need to found a second republic. Republic, whether it be in Argentina, Canada, Mexico, the United States, Egypt, South Africa, Uruguay, Brazil, Italy, Colombia, Chile, wherever. The key lies in doing this by doing exactly the opposite of what the New World Order wants you to do. First of all, they want you to be passive, so stop being passive. Get up, on, for, up from your chair and start doing things. I'm going to share with you five pillars for a second republic. Briefly stated, first of all, restore the sovereign nation state in its three key functions. First of all, the key function of a sovereign nation state is to integrate all those social forces which act centrifugally because they, people have different interests and they have uh, conflict of interest and bring them together for a purpose. What is that purpose? The common good. Second function of the sovereign nation state, ensure public awareness that people should always understand the internal and the external dangers. That's defending the national interest. And third, to govern effectively, to protect effectively, to guarantee for all of us a future that is necessarily prosperous and for future generations as well. 
Second pillar for a second republic. Recover monetary and currency sovereignty. Put public money to its primary use again to fuel the real economy, which means putting private banks in their place. It means recovering your central bank or the Federal Reserve in the United States. It means doing away with fractional lending system, which is creating fiat money and it is fraud. It means doing away with usury, which is the main fuel of inflation. Third pillar. Reject the public debt system that puts the burden of power, elite, money, power on your shoulders. It's that way in the case of Argentina, in the case of Uruguay, Ecuador, Mexico, Indonesia, Greece today, Turkey. In the case of the United States, it means audit the Fed. Fourth pillar, reinvigorate Republican institutions. Free them from the dependence on money power. And you must, for this, distinguish between three things that are often confused. Nation, state, government. The nation is the people, the territory, the history, the language, the culture, the values, the style. It is the dead, the living, and the unborn. If you're an American, is George Washington not an American because he's dead? Is Abraham Lincoln not an American because he's dead? The nation are its dead also. It's living today and those who are yet unborn. That is the nation. It is the hardware of nationhood. Secondly, the state is an abstract template. It is used to run the nation today, to carry it to its proper future. It's the software. Government. Government are the real people who actually run the state. The presidents, the senators, the prime ministers, the representatives, the deputies, the governors, the mayors, and the legions of ministers and secretaries. Where is the trap? The trap lies in the mechanisms, the mechanisms whereby individual citizens actually occupy the places of power in the state, to become president, to become senator, to become whatever. Because it is all based on money. The whole mechanism for individuals to, to access the state is based on huge amounts of money. I mean hundreds of millions, billions of dollars. So our so-called democracy today is no democracy at all. It is the favorite system of the money power elite. Now, money is not democratic. No reason why it should be. So, a democracy based on money is no democracy at all. What we have, unfortunately, nowadays in America, in Argentina, in every country, is the best democracy money can buy. So the key is to free democratic mechanisms from subservience to money power. Founding a second republic means rewriting the whole relationship between the nation, the state and government. Rewriting the software so that the hardware, the real nation, may prosper. And fifth and last, the fifth pillar, return to traditional values. Put things right side up again. And this means, it's very simple, that finance, the world of virtual money, should serve the real economy of work, toil, creativity, effort, of building and doing useful things. The economy, in turn, should be subordinated to a public awareness system which is ex executed from the top echelons of a sovereign nation-state. Now, that political awareness system, that political project, must underscore and must respect culture. And culture should abide, respect, be inspired by the transcendental, God. Because only the intuition that there is a superior invisible order gives any significance and meaning to human actions, whether they be individual or collective. What do we have today? <clears throat> exactly the opposite. Today we have finance completely swamping and destroying the economy. The economy paying the political system, as we just said, campaigns, politicians, and everything for gross corruption. The political destroying culture, as we've seen with this standardized, global, pornographic, perverse culture. And naturally, this subculture has no need for the transcendental, it has no need for God, it has no need for anything aside from its own specific, very horrendous objectives and goals. To recap, then, what will it be? Will you be a passive collaborator with the New World Order power elite? Or will you become a proactive resistance freedom-fighting warrior? 
From the bottom up, we have to recover our personal sovereignty, which means driving coordinated community action through global cooperation, which will lead to each community taking their respective countries back. It means founding a second republic in every country in the world that feels that it is being destroyed and stepped on by the small but extremely powerful New World Order power elite. Remember, five steps. Restore the sovereign nation-state, recover sovereign currency, reject the public debt system, reinvigorate republican institutions, and return to a traditional value system. It's that easy, it's that hard.